Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Sunday, September 29th, 2019. My name is Rich, and joining me to announce the nominees for the Stage 5 Ninja Awards is Bajan. How are you making out? <laughs> I'm good, bro. How's it going? Really good. I'm back from Vegas and yes. uh, excited to cover the a 11 nominees. We had a lot of interest, a lot of opinions this season, and I hope we can uh, do it justice. Yeah, man. Um, I'm really curious to, see, to hear like everybody's thoughts on the nominations because it was really tough this year. Like All the categories, there was so much to choose from. <laughs> yes, some of those came down to the wire. We were actually, before we started recording, we were still debating on some of the nominees. So we're going to try to give some honorable mentions, some other people that uh, came so close to being nominated in all the categories. Uh, and we have a new we have a new category that we made this year that I'm very excited to share as well. Let's get into it, bro. All right. Starting out with Breakout Performance Mail. The nominees are, drum roll please, <laughs> we have Caleb Bergstrom. Brian Burke, Seth Rogers, Philip Scott, and David Wright. All right, so let's break down who, like you know, their stories, like not not fully, but just like a little, recap, yeah, you know, um, yeah, a little bit of a recap for some of the people would probably be helpful. So <laughs> let me think. How are we gonna do this? Caleb Bergstrom is one of the baby Bergies. If you can't remember that, you weren't paying attention. I mean, come on, you you all remember him? <laughs> yeah. Brian Burke would be the Birkinator, who had a very surprisingly good run. I mean, I think he really blew us all away. Yeah. Uh, he did the splits at the top of the warp wall, and his mom <laughs> really stole the show. Oh, he was awesome. In particular, his dad. Uh, I don't want to hog all the conversation here. Seth Rogers, what do you, what's your take on him? I mean, his big red. I mean, he had such a phenomenal year. One of the best uh, debuts, I, I think, in just the history of American Ninja Warrior. What do you make it to Siege 3 in his rookie year? Yeah, yeah, which we did see Joe Morowski do, but not as far as Seth went. Yeah, that was crazy, man. Um, really, really excited to see him on the list. And, um, I mean, it's clear he's going to be a very, very big presence in the american ninja warrior community going forward in particular he's really young yeah it's insane he was 19 i think i'm pretty sure he was yeah man philip scott was another uh surprise addition this year yeah he has um asperger's but the more the, the thing that i think everybody remembers is that he had a panic attack right before um i believe it was his uh i think was it the city finals course that he almost had a, that he had panic attack right before the run yeah, he pushed through. He pushed through in the qualifiers, but then like the the pressure of the second night really got to him. Yeah, and I mean, I I feel that man. Um, probably not to his degree, but you know, we've all been in situations where you're you're really um, overexerted, and to have a panic attack and still you know um, go through with it, um, it shows a lot of courage on his part. Yeah, and last but not least was David Wright, the Cake Ninja. Yeah, you can talk about this one. <laughs> uh, he beat the city finals course he ended up going out in stage one in vegas um, but he had a lot of focus on the show uh, and i think that's important to re to remind everyone i um, probably should have said that before we announced these that we really focus on the show it would be easy to say you know pick breakout performance based around who went the furthest right that's and then it's easy to decide who went the absolute furthest you pick that person yeah yeah but we try to keep the focus on what we saw on the show so who really stood out uh, had big stories, big moments, and these were the top five mm -hmm. from that perspective. Yeah, you want to encapsulate everything. It can't just be based on statistics because it, it's kind of boring if you just do that. So it, you you have to take the whole culmination of story performance, how much screen time they have, um, how much relatability, how much you're rooting for them, or just everything involved. Yeah, so we had some other extremes. So we have some honorable mentions here. Um, from the story-wise side of things ben yudi aka chad flaxington and yeah. sam garay come on sam garay that's that's the dude bro <laughs> man i if i yeah. had it my way sam garay's on this this nominations list sam say let's represent man with his with his uh manager and his crazy friend on the sidelines he was awesome yeah yeah they were definitely awesome i just felt like you know the people that we picked maybe kind of balanced out the Big personalities with the performance on the course. So yeah, I could it was kind that. of like a, 
yeah, it, it was just a way to do it. And from the other perspective, we had Tyler Smith, Alex Blick, and Ben Wales all do amazing this season, going to stage two and stage three, but didn't really get to focus on the show to stand out as much. Yeah. So that category was a nightmare, as you can tell with all the names we had to go through. The next one was a little bit easier when we looked at it. Breakout performance for the females. We have Maddie Howard, Taylor Amon, Sandy Zimmerman, Angela Gargano, and Caitlin Bergstrom. So some of these are a little tough, tougher than others. I got to mention right off the bat, Maddie Howard, I almost missed. I had forgotten about her and when I was going back through. She got took eighth place in city finals as a rookie. Like, she did amazing. She ran in the same uh, course as uh, Jesse Graff, so she got outshined a little bit there. Mm. But, like, consider that. She took eighth place in city finals as a rookie. Yeah, that's insane, man. And and when Rich is saying this, uh, he, you don't mean, like, of the females. You mean in general, like, all the contestants. Gen- overall, yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, very, very strong. Uh, Taylor Amon, we talked about her so much, and we know her from Team Ninja Warrior. Yeah. I hope you all know who that is. Sandy Zimmerman. Um, t- tell us about her. Sandy Zimmerman is the, quote-unquote, first mom to hit a buzzer on the show. Oh. She had a big story this season. Yes. Oh, I love her story. Yeah, she, yeah, she, she was really great. had a great story and great performance. I mean, she's she's a strong contender when you really think about it. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, Angela Gargano. Uh, maybe you don't remember as much her biggest story was in qualifiers she had her leg brace on she tore her acl last year on the show like she had an injury on the show itself had a leg brace went very over the top in her uh recovery efforts to get back on the show again in time um and did fantastic managing managing to qualify for city finals in spite of that yeah and last but not least we got caitlin bergstrom who's the other baby birdie and I mean, you remember her with the flowy, curly hair. You know, she's she had the, uh, I guess, the the joggers on all the time. She was really, really fun, and she was so impressive. I, I almost feel like she overshadowed her brother, but she just had so much personality, charisma, and just, like, a great smile. Like, everything about her, uh, she's just so unique, I guess, is the best way to describe it, um, in terms of compared to the rest of the field. And she was a really good breath of fresh air. Our next category is Best New Obstacle, and this was hard to narrow down. Yeah, there's some good ones, man. Like, this is always a really, really fun, um, I guess, for me at least, a really fun category every single year. This one and uh, Ninja Killer of the Year. I love them. Yeah, Best New Obstacle is interesting because I usually get the most feedback on this one of people that want certain obstacles, and it's always surprising to me. Things that we thought were fun or cool that we, um, seem to line up fairly well uh, a lot of times. But then there's always those ones that kind of catch us off guard. Yeah. Uh, we had to include... Uh, sorry, I'll run down, down them here. Power Tower, Coconut Climb, Grim Sweeper, Iron Summit, and Slam Dunk. Uh, Power Tower, we kind of felt like we had to include, right? Like, it kind of made a big yeah, scene it, this year. It, for me, at the very least... The city qualifiers was the re- like the major portion for the power tower where it created really fun dynamics and runs. But even more so in the city finals, the power tower, even as even though it wasn't as dynamic of an obstacle, um, it made up for that in terms of the drama as in terms of the stakes involved, because that safety pass was such a big deal. So overall, the power tower was awesome. Yeah, well said. Uh, I definitely preferred the qualifying one, but like I said, the stakes of the city finals one couldn't be uh, overstated. So the coconut climb was a really interesting one. I hope everybody remembers that it looked like a tree on either end. They'd have like a, a hoop that they'd use to climb up one side and skirt across and then down the other. Really dynamic, fun obstacle. We saw some big, big falls um, some really good, you know, interesting stories that it created where, you know, watching Barclay stock it, struggle on it was crazy. And then we had, uh, oh, I'm going to forget the guy's name, but we had somebody plummet down the, uh, the other side of it and fail unexpectedly. Yeah. Like it was just a very, very 
interesting, cool, different obstacle. Yeah, visually it was there and um, technique involved. It wasn't just one thing. It it really had a different dynamics throughout it. Even at the very end, you couldn't just dismount from it. From it, you had to do something different. Uh, the next obstacle was the Grim Sweeper, which I honestly wanted to include and wasn't going to uh, until I got several people write in and say they really liked it and hoped it would be on there. And to give it a bonus. Drew Dreschel on the official podcast was saying that it's a fantastic obstacle that he almost fell off of and that people are underestimating that it's very difficult, much more difficult than it looked. Yeah, I think it was just um, maybe in the wrong place or people just expected too much from it um, in terms of it replacing the wing nuts. But as an obstacle in itself, it's freaking awesome, dude. I mean, the visual dynamic of it is really there, not to mention... The technique involved with it is completely different from all the other obstacles we've seen on the show. So I thought it was very, very creative, and I like it a lot. Iron Summit was the next nominee, and if you don't remember, it was the combination obstacle that we had on stage three of Iron Maiden and Northwest Passage, which Northwest Passage is the one that took out the some of the top ninjas in one of the city finals courses. Uh, this was a nice combination of the two of the more difficult uh finals courses we've seen yeah i loved it its placement was perfect it um was very difficult but not cheap in a way um in in particular and just the way that it was made and yeah i like creativity i I like obstacles like this and also it really really taxed their their bodies and in particular their forearms um everything about it i thought was very very creative and dynamic Yes, find a way to stop the handles from hitting people on the head, and it'd be a really great addition to the show. Yeah. Uh, And as a fun addition to this one, I was so happy to have people write in to say that they wanted Slam Dunk, because we loved that obstacle, thought it was very cool. Even though it didn't take out very many people, it was still a great new obstacle. Yeah, that's one of those obstacles where... Yeah, the statistics don't show that it's, you know, knocking out all the ninjas, but it doesn't have to always be that. Um, Visually, it was really fun. It looks like an obstacle that's really fun to do, you know, in in a gym. And and just, I don't know, I thought it was very creative. All right, moving on next, we had the Ninja Killer of the Year. Ooh, this this is always the big one for uh, a lot of the fans, Rich. (laughs) We don't get this right. We're going to hear about it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we may have a very, the most clear-cut one we've ever had. So let, let's go run down these nominees. Yeah, we'll, we'll we run have down the... the nominees and also the winner. I mean, is <laughs> <it's, laughs> it really a competition? If but, people don't yeah, vote do for it. this one, uh, like, yeah, how do you not pick? All right, so let's go through. Ninja Killer of the Year. We have Diving Boards, Angry Birds, Tire Run, Lightning Bolts, and floating monkey bars. Now, I mean, obviously, lightning bolts is going to win, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah, of course. How, how could anyone not pick Angry Birds? I almost don't even want to talk about the other nominees because that thing went over twenty-two, which we've never seen before. Yeah, this is this should be called the Kevin Brecky "I Hate You" as a <laughs> uh, like award. Like, man. People don't know, Brecky's the guy that made uh, Angry Birds and is a really prolific uh, n- ninja obstacle creator. And man, <laughs> that Angry Birds. Whew. Yes, and before you start sending him hate mail, his they modified it heavily for the show as well. So they, uh, yeah, the version that ended up in there was practically unbeatable by the looks of it. Yeah, that said, I mean, we, Rich and I are not the only ones that vote. It's actually a culmination of various, various different um, people in the Ninja Warrior community that have influence. I don't like the term influencers, but influence in the show and the the social dynamics. So who knows? Maybe every we're out to lunch, Rich, and I don't know, diving boards or lightning bolts win. I don't know. I mean, really, if you think about the storylines involved, diving boards and tire run really could play uh, a big upset. It's true. You think Tire Run knocked out uh, Najee Richardson, and if it wasn't for the safety pass, would have taken out Drew Dreschel, too. Yeah, and that's a very, very big factor. Drew Dreschel, the winner (laughs) of this season, the third ever American Ninja Warrior, his season and whole thing could have ended right there. 
All right. Best comeback story. Really great contenders this year for this. Yes. We had Travis Rosen, Mike Bernardo, Grant McCartney, Tiana Weberly, and Nate Burkhalter. Oof. <laughs> it seemed like a shoe and it was like something I wrote down. Normally it's trouble it's a little tricky to figure these ones out until the end of the season. I like locked in Travis Rosen right from the start because it's like how do you not have him in there? Yeah, but man, I mean, dude, I would I would say Mike Bernardo, Grant McCartney, they equally have like just the things that stand out to you. And then when you consider Tiana Weberly and her just transformation to get back and Nate Bur- Nate Burkhalter, what he went through the season, battling like some insane illness during the finals of all things. I mean, all of them have a really, really great argument for winning this award. It's going to be one of the hardest ones to choose. It will be. I thought he w- I thought Travis was a shoe in at the beginning of the season. And now I'm not sure. Next up, let's talk about this new category that we created. I love for it. best sidelines performance. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited for this one. Now this may not come back again, but this season it seemed warranted to have. Yes, this was a season of the sideline people just becoming stars on their own. So best sidelines performance. We have Vicky Rail, that would be Adam Rail's mom. The Backyard Ninja Kids during Tyler Smith's run. Pamela Burke, which would be Brian Burkenator's mom. I would argue also his dad. Yes, Should be arguably there. his dad as well. I, I would put I would put Burkenator's parents. How about that? <laughs> sure. Primo Polpo, uh, that would be Sem Garay's manager, um, as well as his uh, friend from City Finals as well. And Zuri Hall. I mean, <laughs> first of all, Vicky Rail, is, like Adam Rail's mom, is just amazing. She is a she is just an institution on this show. And where we have a lot of people's family members, um, you know, Carson Williams' mom and a bunch of others, um, you know, being characters in their own, I feel like Adam Ra- or Vicky Rail in particular is so genuine with her emotions and caring. Like you could just literally see the the worry, but also the love. And and she just seems like the sweetest lady. Yeah, it's it's was kind of hard to pick some of these, right? There was so many people that stood out over the year and then it's hard to really to make sure that everybody understands who we're referring to. Right. So when I say Pamela Burke, you might go, who's that? But if you saw her, you would remember her for sure. Dude, that hair, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't not remember that hair. Wow. Uh, so, yes, very excited to see how this one plays out uh, because that could but, go yeah. a couple of different ways. There are some great nominees in there. Yeah, but shout out to uh, the Backyard Ninja Kid um, during Tyler Smith's run. For people that don't remember, he's the one that was just like losing his mind with these amazing face- facial expressions and like just shouting and yelling to the to the crowd. Um, he was such an amazing presence during Tyler Smith's run. Almost overshadowed him, to be honest with you, and not <laughs> yeah. in a bad way. I mean, when I think Tyler Smith's run, I think the Backyard Ninja Kid. That kid was so awesome. And I, I apologize. I don't know his name. So, that you know, that's what we're calling him. I, I thought, you know, it was kind of toss up. Can I, I could find his name. But then I thought they would probably appreciate more yeah. promoting their channel. Backyard Ninja Kids that, anyway. That and so. he's a juvenile. Like, let's let's not get into, <laughs> into right. that. So. so, yes. So, yes. It was he's one of the few times we've actually could hear someone over the rest of the crowd screaming from the sidelines. Like when they cut away from him, you could still hear him. Uh, he was so adorable. I love that kid. Um, Primo Polpo, we all remember him. And Zuri Hall was just amazing this whole season. Yeah, Zuri really stood out this season. We want to make sure that we got her into a category of her own. Uh, and this is how we we're doing that. Uh, next up, shocking fall of the year. And there were a lot to choose from. Yeah, I wish there weren't, <laughs> but there <laughs> yeah. were. Every season, there's a lot to choose from. This one had some really spectacular ones. Um, so the nominees here are Jeff Britton, Adam Rail, Najee Richardson, Jesse Graff, and Drew Dreschel in stage one. Yeah. Um, I mean, what can you say? Jeff Britton? I, I guess 
it's shocking in the fact of how well, you know, he's the very first American Ninja Warrior, the first person to do the perfect season and everything else, you know. Um, Adam Rail, really, man, like, his fall, it, it's it's one of those things where he's literally holding the the next obstacle, and you kind of just, like, res, like, sign him off being like, oh, he's made it to the next thing, and out of nowhere, he falls. It was insane. Uh, why don't you go over Najee Richardson? Right. So Najee fell on tire run, um, totally catching us off guard. I really thought he was going to go far this season, although he did seem a little out of sorts, right? And he, as we found out later, he was not completely feeling it this season. And uh, I really hope we see more from him next year. Uh, Jesse Graff, who got all the hype this year and earned every bit of it, did amazing uh, in city qualifiers and finals so we were so excited to see her moving on to stage two and uh she just had a really really unexpected fall at a spot where we know would be one of her strong suits at, you know as we later hear in, in even interviews with her that you know what catching something midair is one of the things she's best at and the fact that she missed on the double dipper was a complete shock to even her yeah we it all happens to everyone um, for Drew Dreschel, this this was a big one where we kind of just sign, we just expect so much from this guy, um, deservingly, undeservingly, I don't really know, but, you know, you almost kind of just gloss over the fact that stage one is a hard thing, and Drew Dreschel is human, and he can make mistakes, and wow, the way he fell just out of nowhere, almost like just in an instant, on that tire run really was um, a major shock. And just to think, dude, this is, this could have been the end of his season in any other season rather than this one where he got that safety pass. Yeah. The safety pass is kind of a double-edged sword in a way, right? Like you could easily overlook things because you have that safety pass. You're not maybe taking it as seriously as you need to every single obstacle is dangerous and you gotta pay attention every step of the way yeah and and this isn't an uh, uh what do you call it um, a nomination or anything but dude that safety pass and and really the speed pass also major major thumbs up i really really enjoy the fact that those are here uh two uh honorable mentions here are jesse lebrecht's fall um at the end of stage one on the cargo net was heartbreaking to see once again yeah and Sean Bryan, who didn't technically fall, which is really the only reason he's not listed, um, when he had to leave the jumping spider, was uh, pretty unexpected and tragic. Brutal. In particular, just, he was looking so strong this entire season. In particular, I mean, technically it's last year, but in the special that we saw him, um, I mean, Sean Bryan is somebody that has improved leaps and bounds year by year, and... I really hope he has a full, healthy recovery because I I look very much forward to seeing him next year. All right. Next up, one of the biggest pains in the world to disc- to actually uncover is the stealthiest ninja word. This is all rich, man. I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> okay, so digging through the files and figuring out who was skipped over that shouldn't have been, trying to sort out and... Actually, I'm going to give a quick shout out here to Spence Kling uh, from Instagram, who wrote in lots of suggestions for this one. We both debated out a lot of reasons to pick different people. Uh, Thank you, Spence, for helping me kind of get my head straight around this one. Uh, So in the end, the nominees are Sean Darling Hammond, Charlie Andrews, Chris Wilczewski, Ben Wales, and a tie, uh, a joint nomination for Tyler Gillette and Kevin Carbone. <laughs> why don't you explain why they're they're like paired together? Okay, so because they're well, go ahead. <laughs> they, we pair them together so much, but looking at their actual performance and coverage and everything this season, I really kind of had to combine them here because Tyler Gillette was in the city qualifiers. You know, they both did get segments of a sort 
in either the qualifiers or the finals. But anyone that, you know, they're big name ninjas that went very deep. They both went to Kane Lane in stage three, went very, very far and didn't get much mention at all beyond the single episode that they did get the, in spite of Tyler in the qualifiers getting fastest and going to the power tower versus Drew Dressel. And then finished city. He was fast forward in the city finals when he actually completed the course and had third fastest time and then made it all the way deep into stage three without getting mentioned again. Kevin Carbone was fast forward, beating the mega wall in the qualifiers and then finished the city finals and went to the power tower with Drew Dreschel as well. So Tyler had the story of the qualifiers. Kevin had the story in the finals and both of them got completely left out the rest of the way, making it to Kane Lane. If that's clear, so, they have very, so very identical short, seasons. Yeah. Long story short, they basically were like, whether they like it or not, they're, they're twinsies this season. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Sean Darling Hammond was skipped in qualifiers, fast forwarded in finals and completely skipped in Vegas for some reason, even though he's a big name on the show. Charlie Andrews. This is the one that actually makes me kind of angry. He had a major injury on Ninja two seasons ago, I believe. And is finally back and running the course. Like everyone was waiting to see him come back. Like one of the, you know, the best, most promising young ninjas out there. And he did, he had an amazing story, did quite well in the qualifiers, but wasn't able to qualify and they didn't show him at all. Yeah. This is a big story. Um, I mean, my guess is they're waiting to highlight him next year if he does better. But either way, the f- he wasn't mentioned in the slightest. And this is Charlie Andrews. It's it's a very, very big story. Yeah, it really didn't need... I would have loved to have the full run and segment for him, but even a fast forward, letting us know that he's back and that he's okay. Like, I, I really would have appreciated that. Yeah, in particular, the OK, because for, I guess, everybody that cares, like to them, he's still like recovering from this horrific, horrific accident. Yeah. Um, one of the weird ones actually here was Chris Wolcheski, who got fast forwarded in both qualifiers and finals and then completely skipped in stage one. Like Chris Wolcheski was like one of the biggest stories of last year. And then they just blow past him this year. Yeah, didn't he win the comeback story last year in the Stage 5 Ninja Awards? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, and and not even a mention this year. Crazy. Uh, And Ben Wales. And the thing with the Stealthiest Ninja Award, depending on how you vote, right? Because it can go, you can look at it a few different ways. Um, Ben Wales is a shoe in if your criteria is someone who did well and was completely overlooked. If you don't know who it is, that's a pretty good sign that maybe they're one of the stealthiest ninjas. I, I have no idea. He was man. fast forwarded <laughs> the entire way through. He was a walk on rookie who made it to stage two. Like, that's crazy. Made it to stage two. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine this guy? Like, there's always this story every single year. But imagine you do so well. You make it to Vegas and you get to stage two. And <laughs> you aren't shown at all holy crap that must suck man yeah yeah i would think so uh i am really gonna have a hard time picking this category i gotta tell you because this is these are some tough picks and i and i have no idea who's gonna win this one yeah there's many ways to go about it i mean if you really think about like somebody that should be should have been shown charlie andrew is 100 percent but if you if you try to find a mix, there's a lot of different people. And then if you just go based on statistics and blah, blah, blah alone, Ben Wales is your guy. So there's there's many ways and it really just goes down, breaks down to how you vote and how you perceive it. So we have two categories next. We have the female ninja of the year and the male ninja of the year. The big ones. These are the ones. So for female ninja of the year, the nominees are Maggie Thorne. Michelle Warnke, Jesse Lebrecht, Barclay Stockett, and Jesse Graff. Good luck voting for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this is probably one of the, the hardest ones I think we've ever had to choose. 
usually you have some kind of a front runner, but the stories and the accomplishments of the women this season are so compelling that it's really going to be incredibly hard to sort through them. Yeah, and a uh, special shout out to runners up Tiana Weberly and Alyssa Beard. I mean, definitely they had amazing seasons also. Um, but man, in terms of Maggie Thorne, her story, and she had one of the most amazing runs in Ninja Warrior history, overcoming just so much. So, like, for me, she's just an instant standout. And then Michelle Warnke, I mean, dude. <laughs> She hit the buzzer in the city finals. How crazy yeah. is that? I know. Of all the women that could do it, I, I love that it's Michelle Warnke, right? She was the second woman up the warped wall, and she's the second woman to beat a city finals course. And I think she's really earned it, really earned that moment in the spotlight again. Um, she had such a crazy run, too, where she got she smacked herself in the head with the ring and like at stitches and everything and still managed to beat the uh the final scores uh, absolutely amazing jesse lebrec followed right in her footsteps and did the exact same thing which we've been waiting to see from her we knew she could do it um just a fantastic ninja all around and you know had that moment to shine with her yeah totally barclay stockett had you know she wasn't able to to pull off a finals or stage one so a little bit of an underdog in this case, but she had some compelling runs. Um, she hit some, you know, milestones of her own, went very deep in the course. Um, she's just always fantastic and just, you know, eats up the, the limelight better than anyone. Yeah, for me, what really stood out for Barclay this year was her story um, and, and her runs. She had really compelling runs, but she had a great story also. Jesse Graff, um, always a contender, but this season, you know, she did amazing. She, you know, beat the qualifiers, which is not really that shocking, but um, it was an emotional moment, right? She collapsed on top of it and said she was home. Um, just a, a great, you know, feel good story there. And then in city finals, she arguably, not even in, inarguably, she went the furthest of any ninja. She didn't get there faster, but she went further on the ninth obstacle than anyone else. And, you know, so near to a complete history making run. Uh, in spite of her, the fact that she had not been training a lot of ninja coming into the season. So, I mean, she's just such a top notch athlete. Love to see her, her hit new milestones every year. Mm -hmm. All right. Gushing over. <laughs> Moving on to the male ninja of the year. We had so many choices on this one. This was tough. We really had to narrow them down. Even like it took time to narrow down just to the runner ups, you know, <laughs> and then from there, I mean, dude, it, it was a lot of, you know, back and forth, back and forth. But we finally managed to bring it down to five ninjas. Right. So a we lot of have. You guys are, sorry, but I was just going to say. A lot of people are not going to agree with our choices. That's why we have a people's choice um, for the best male and female ninjas of the year. Um, definitely, you know, if you disagree with any of our nominations, hey, let your vote be known. But here we go. Right. So the male, the nominees for male ninja of the year are Seth Rogers, Matisse Awadi, Adam Rail. Drew Dreschel and Daniel Gill. Hoo wee! That is a Ooh. list, man. Yeah, and it, it's like you said, it was so hard to narrow down. Let's actually go through some of the honorable mentions. We had Dave Cavanaugh, Ryan Stratus, Michael Torres, Ethan Swanson, and Joe Morovsky. All had fantastic seasons as well. Yeah, and of course, there's the standout names like Najee Richardson and people like him, but. Um... These were, this was tough for multiple reasons, but what we really wanted to think about was when you think about season 10, or sorry, uh, season 11 of American Ninja Warrior, uh, who do you remember in terms of storyline, runs, performance, everything involved? And you really can't argue against any of the people on the board right now. Seth Rogers had such an amazing rookie year 
and his story and everything else is coming to prominence. He kind of was like the new Matisse. Uh, although, I mean, I guess not. To I mean, let's really, if you think about Matisse last year, it was like everywhere. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was that. Now, Matisse, on the other hand, I I still think the be- one of the best things that could have happened for him was him really just showing a more... Like, I don't even know if human side is the right term, but just like really like becoming more like just showing a very low key humbleness in, I, I believe it was stage two, if I remember correctly, um, yeah. where he really struggled and you really had a lot of empathy for him. Like, hey, this is a kid and he's got his own struggles and everything else. And, you know, he's it was just amazing. Yeah, Matisse um, had a really compelling season, like beyond the performance, which he did fantastic. You know, we think back, you know, he beat Daniel Gill for the safety pass. Like, yeah, that is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And Adam Rail, Adam's just fantastic. We've been praising him for years to see him, you know, push pack those past those boundaries and do what we knew he could do. And then, you know, to add to the the compelling part of his story, we have that tragic fall towards the ends of stage three, which we've seen from so many of our favorite ninjas, right? Like how many years have we seen Joe and Drew and others go that far into stage three and fall? I mean, and this is just part of the growing process, Adam. Like I'm sure you would have loved to have finished the whole thing. It just means it's not your year and we will definitely be seeing you up there in the next, in the next year or the coming years for sure. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I might, it just might be me, but I also took into account what the accolades these ninjas achieve outside of the show proper. And Adam Rail has been killing it just like he does every single year um, in the regional circuits and everything else. And yeah, he's just so incredibly strong. Drew Dreschel, we threw a pity bone to. We thought maybe we should include him just because, you know, maybe he, you know, yeah, he had, a, he, I guess he had an okay year. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. He has no chance of winning this at all. But, you know, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll give him a we'll give him overlook that guy. Um, <laughs> uh, Drew is amazing. Nothing more needs to be said. We we have a pretty strong idea that he is, you know, he, he has a chance at this this award. Eh, slight, but he has a chance. Uh, Daniel Gill had an amazing year, a record year, any other year. And it would have been like. Like, just imagine if Drew hadn't run or if he didn't have that safety pass, like Daniel would have been on top of the world. Oh, yeah. It would be Still Daniel did amazing. <laughs> hey, do you, well, no, I, I was about to say, do you think Daniel Gill got the 50,000 for last minute stand? But he wasn't, I guess. Damn, he gets nothing. No. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> well, he must have got something. I, they do get little, you know, things for going so far and stuff. So okay, I'm, I'm curious, good. actually, what he would have got for that. Um. But besides that, Daniel had an amazing season, proved he is one of the, if not the top ninja, like really way up there. And we'll see uh, how he does in the coming years. He's he's had that taste. Now, is he going to be able to do it next year? So that is it for our nominees for this season. Um, there will be three other categories for you to choose from. We will have links up on all of our social media. Wait, wait, what are the uh, categories, man? I'm about to say, man. I was oh. about to say. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were about to bury the lead. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the categories that you will be able to choose, the people's choices, are for female ninja, male ninja, and best obstacle. Yeah. I mean, they, they have to be. Um, dude, this is going to be really fun. I'm, I'm curious to see if, you know, the, the winners for people's choice are different from the, you know, the polls or whatever what what is it called the academy like what what do you call the voters yes we, we've been calling them the academy i think in previous seasons sure sure that doesn't sound pretentious at all yeah, I, I, I sound i sound bougie so that's fine i'll, I'll be part of the academy <laughs> but dude um very excited to hear everybody's thoughts please get word out let everyone know that voting's happening um for people's choice and i really really want to see your guys' submissions and yeah you can always uh, well why don't you break down how people can with well, the process of submitting their votes right so last season i i did uh, there were some people that were upset that we had only twitter voting um, so to make it as open as I possibly can, 
I don't care how you get it to me. I'm going to I'm going to set up a poll, uh, uh, wait, a submission form on our website at ninjapodcast.com. But if you get me a vote through email, Twitter, Instagram, DM me, I don't care how you get a YouTube comment it to me. <laughs> if you get it to us, I will count it. So get us a vote for your female ninja, male ninja, and best obstacle. 100%. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. You can even Reddit it. You know what, John? Throw up a Reddit post, and we'll count those two. I'm on it. Perfect. So there, you got every reason in the world to vote. Get us your votes. Have your voice heard. Yeah, and when we finally like close the polls and everything, I don't want to hear anybody complaining. Oh, I didn't get it in in time. Blah blah blah. You didn't. You know, you didn't have the avenue. Nuh-uh. Don't want to hear it. You get all these options to vote. I want to get all the votes i want to hear all your guys thoughts and you have until the end of day october 4th friday october 4th that is the last day to vote so if you'd like to get those votes into us you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com i am at ninja podcast on both instagram and twitter and bijan how can they reach you oh they can reach me so many different places they can hit me up at twitter and instagram at bijan 151 that is b-i-j-a-n 151 submit your votes there i don't care i'll count them dude let's hear them all i want to hear all your guys thoughts so excited all right thank you all so much for listening and have a wonderful week see you guys during the awards y'all gonna be fun on Peace, Love, and Deuces.